Welcome back YouTube, VST here with FPS Tech and of course I have my S22 Ultra, it's running the Exynos version and guys, you know that I'm on the quest to find the holy grail which for a Samsung phone means one and one thing only smoothless, perfect, lockless, startless operation and I've been trying all the tips, almost all the tips that I'm getting from you guys and I believe that we are now very very close thanks to my guy Nishan so Nishan is suggesting 10 steps I'll now implement all those steps guys all the settings you can see on the screen and this video is going to have three parts so the first part is going to be me showing you how to set all of this up so if you know how to do this and if you already did that one because I posted the community post asking you guys to test with me you can skip directly to step number two step number two is going to be me testing everything here on screen on camera guys so that you can just see how it performs and then the last part three of the video is going to be me giving you my honest feedback and opinion on how this impacted my phone so guys now let's back up and start with point number one and point number one is going inside the recovery mode and wiping the cache partition so for that you're gonna need a pc with a cable right so we need to then turn off our phone all right turn it off when the logo is gone guys you need to make sure to hook up your phone to the pc using of course a usb-c cable until you see here charging information here it is guys the charging information now keep the volume up keep holding it and press the power button all right now keep hold both buttons logo is there just release the power button but just keep holding here the volume up until you see something that is not so common boom voila this is indeed the recovery menu now we need to just scroll down and by the way we navigate here using the volume rocker so volume down is scrolling down volume up scrolling up so use volume down to just go here to wipe cache partition pay attention guys if you wipe data yeah then everything is gone so wipe cache partition and confirmation happens with the power button boom here you're gonna get a menu do you want really to wipe the cache partition yes and no i'm gonna press for yes so pressing yes boom and now you can just see guys yep wiping the cache okay and after the cache has been deleted guys just click here the power button on reboot system now and you can actually unhook up the phone and this completes step number one so step number one was just to delete the cache partition again if you are senior or if you're a more experienced user you can guys skip the whole first part of the video and directly go to the part number two where i'm just going to show all of this implemented already on my phone on camera and just to get a see how it behaves but if you don't know how to do those things guys you can stick with me and i'm just gonna guide you to all these steps and while i'm waiting for my phone to restart and sorry guys my voice is down a bit so i'm really not in my best shape by still doing this video for you and if you like content like this guys appreciate the sub all right the phone has been restarted and we need to execute step number two which is setting up the ram plus to eight gigabytes and yeah you know i'm gonna follow so i'm just going inside my settings guys i am just going to type for ram now guys i need to click here on ram plus and i need to turn it to on and of course we start my phone and by the way the first time it restarts is going to be only set to four so i need to go one more time inside ram plus and make sure that it uses the eight gigabyte as suggested by nishan and then we can move to step number three checking okay only set to four i have to choose eight and then sadly i need to restart one more time and guys i never said it's going to be easy but i really hope that all of this will just produce a nice and better impact all right let's restart the phone and then we can move to step number three all right we now have eight gigabytes of ram plus and now step number three for step number three we need to use good guardian so if you don't have good guardians guys go download it i'm gonna put the link down below why do we need good guardians well because for the next step we're gonna need memory guardian and it's part of good guardians and the next step utilizes memory guardian to go here in the customization and change the default to the quick switching mode which translates to keeping more apps in the background when using the previously used app again it is more likely to run with the last state of the app not starting from the beginning and i by the way tested this in one of my videos you can check the results honestly it's a bit better still not at the ios levels when you can open it and up and leave it for days there but yeah slightly better than how it used to be and now we can move 
to the step number four and this is suspend execution for cached app enable according to nishant this really helps in fast quick switching between apps so for the step number four we're gonna need to use the developer options when you're inside just search for suspend okay suspend execution for cached app it's there down below usually it is default for this phone yesterday i tested it with the zelbot didn't really do anything good now i'm gonna hit enable and yeah you guessed it correctly i need to restart my phone one more time step number five is to use the galaxy max application which you can download it directly from play store and by the way also use it for free and set the adaptive refresh rate between 96 to 120 hertz default of course is using lower hertz and according to nishan this also helps with touch lock and with jitter so in case you don't know how to use this guys you're gonna need a pc with adb installed right so you need to connect your phone again to your pc open a common prompt guys run adb devices and if everything works correctly you should see here the id of your device if you get here a message that the phone or device is not authorized you're gonna hear a message on your phone asking you guys to just allow this connection once you've done that one you can type adb device one more time you should see the id here and then guys there is a command to be written this one i'm going to put it also inside the video description this command will actually allow you to use the galaxy max hertz and when you are inside of this application you need to go to adaptive guys and just here put on the minimum hertz 96 how can we be sure that these new settings work? Now, we need to enable the refresh rate monitor, guys. And you can just see here, guys. I have it here and also here. Now, I'm not touching my phone. And see, it only drops to 96. I can, of course, do also 24, right? And see, if I'm not touching the phone again, it will drop now, hopefully, to 24 hertz, right? So, this definitely works. And again, why are we doing this in step five? According to Nishan, this will reduce the JIT and also the touch response will improve. So, once that's done, guys, we can proceed to step number six. In step number six, we need to use again our friend Good Guardians. And this time, we're gonna use Thermal Guardian and increase the thermal threshold to the maximum, okay? So, if you run it for the first time, you're gonna have something like this. Okay, I always use it with the maximum thermal threshold. And in plain words, this means that the phone can take more heat, hopefully producing more performance, right? This is kind of the idea to play with these things. Of course, if you don't like heat, you can also limit this, but hey, this will have an impact on your performance. Now, a few more steps to go. The next step, seven, is to go inside the app settings and set battery to unrestricted for one year at home. Now, how does this work? We need to go one more time inside settings. Need to search for the applications. While we're there, click here and make sure to check show system apps. And then guys, we need to search for One UI Home. So just type One UI Home. Okay, click it. And once you're there, guys, you need to go on the battery and you need to set here unrestricted. The default state, remember, is optimized. Now set unrestricted to One UI Home. Okay, now that's done, guys. Three more steps to go. For step number eight, nine, and 10, we're gonna need developer's options. While you're inside developer's options, guys, just go down and find the animator scale. All right, so the default animator duration scale, guys, is 1x, but we need to set it to 0.5. Step number nine is to set up the window animation scale to one, which is kind of the default setting. And step number 10 is to set the transition animation scale to one X, which is kind of the standard. So we only need to modify the animator duration scale to 0.5. And guys, now that's it. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm going to reboot my phone, hook it up, charge to 100% and test with you. And according to Nishan, guys, the phone is gonna run smooth with the settings and you will not have any compromise to the battery life. He's getting approximately five to six hours of thought. So this could be really the holy grail for the S22 Ultra at least. So, okay, let's back up and now test. Welcome to part number two of the video. This is the part where I'm showing you daily user routine things, attaching pictures in Telegram, browsing, and just using the phone as a normal person will use it. The idea is really to spot how the phone operates. So to start this test, guys, I'm just gonna close all the applications. And for a start, let's open first all my social apps. Open Telegram, 
I'm gonna go open Twitter. Okay, with the scrolling here. I'm gonna open also Viber. All right, let's open Facebook. Let's open Messenger as well. Let's now go for Insta. Okay. Let's now go for TikTok. All right. And last but not least, let's open also Snapchat. All right. Now that's already done. What I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to go inside those applications, just try to use them as a normal user would do. But before I start doing so, yeah, my favorite test. And let me know what you think down below in the videos, guys. Do you think that's a bit better versus how it used to be? If you have been a long time follower, you pretty much know how my phone operates. But okay, let's say you're a new follower. Let me know what you think. Maybe you have another Samsung device. Maybe you have the same S22 device. So what is your experience based on what you see on the screen and what you have in your hands? So let me open now Instagram, guys. I'm going to go and try to get this here, which was really working very, very, very bad in the previous version now into the December update. It's, I would say, a bit better. Now, let me do the same for TikTok. So TikTok here, okay. All right, the video part, switching the cameras. All right, and going outside. And now, guys, let me just go in Telegram and just attach a picture. So I'm gonna go to save messages. I'm gonna click here and let me just send some pictures. All right, sending some pictures going outside, recent menu, yeah. Right now, guys, from what I see, yeah. All right, I will withhold my opinion until the end of the test. Let's now do also some camera apps opening. So camera opening, camera closing, camera opening, switching the lenses, switching the modes, promote, video mode. All right, the back, closing, one more time. Photo, let's go to the back camera. Let's take some pics, all right, without the focus enhancer. All right, yeah. Okay, one more time, just take one, two, three, four, five picks. Okay, yeah. Okay. Not ideal, guys. If you can just see, there is this stutter that comes. It's really, it's hardly noticeable. And by the way, I'm just doing this video in 60 FPS so that you can really stay real with this. Uh, but okay, yeah, let me just withhold my opinion until I'm able to do all my testing. So let me just open here CNN, you know, I'm just going for CNN because I, it's a very busy site. No affiliation whatsoever. Okay, yeah, some browsing here. All right, I have a lot of tabs, closing the tabs, opening the tabs, closing the tabs. Okay. Now one more time going into Instagram. All right. Yep. Okay, recent menu. Okay, navigation on the home screen. Go to access Google, uh, not lawless. Okay, let's see what happens on the animations. All right, now again this test. And by the way, I can start already to feel the heat on my phone. Right now, let's turn to landscape. Okay, this year is super annoying, guys. This year works very slow. I'm not sure what the reason is. Let me show you how this works in horizontal mode. It's really yeah, it's, it's, it's also slow. All right, time for some widgets. The smart widgets, animation quite nice. The weather, all right, I would assume not a problem. Okay, and then here are the stock widgets. Okay, one more time. Okay, let's just check the app drawer. Okay, app drawer. Searching the applications, accessing the settings. Okay, now let's go. Open Telegram. Let's just try to play with the pop-up apps. So let me just do one pop-up. All right. All right, let's do another one. Let's take the clock. Let's put it there and minimize again. Instagram doesn't support pop-ups. So let's just do the weather app. All right, let's put it there. Okay, we have now these three pop-ups. All right, yeah, okay. Now let me just try to close everything. Boom, everything now closed. Let's open the camera again, turning on the lenses. All right, let me just do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's just pump the shutter button, go outside. Yeah, not so bad. Let's go inside the gallery. Let's see what happens on the gallery, guys. We're gonna go inside, we're gonna go the recents. All right. Ooh, wow, okay, yeah. All right, but apps opening probably is improved. What do you think, guys? Let me know down below in the comments. I just believe that the opening animations are really sick, and at least the stutter when opening and closing an animation has been really drastically reduced when using those settings. See here, 
This really looks like using a third party launcher like Launcher or Nova. So I guess playing with the animation duration scale and with the other settings, guys, probably has some positive effect. I cannot be 100% sure though, but from what I see on the screen, it doesn't really eliminate fully the lack and the stutter for me, but it somehow changes the smoothness of the whole perception. So officially, I cannot crown this solution to be the holy grail because only Samsung can fix Samsung, but I do believe that this solution is very, very close to the holy grail of Samsung One UI smoothness. And thank you, Nishan, so much for providing all these tips. And guys, let me know what your test show please you and your family stay safe until we meet in one of my next episodes and with that said vst over and bye no i didn't really throw it